What you doing, Al? Moving my truck. Oh, goodness. Let's see how she does. I already don't know what to do. It's just a truck. How do I scoot these forwards? Just scoot up a little bit. You might have to let it, yeah, let it warm up just a second. Let it kind of warm up. Yeah, get just get, give it a second to idle here. You know. I'm ready to go. Well, I mean, just give her a second. All right. So the D is first gear. Here's the real test. See if you can get it back into park. Uh -oh. That's the trans brake. You don't match this. Huh? Ooh, now go. There you go. What do you think about all that raw horsepower? <laughs> I didn't get to try any of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was just moving it. You gotta let me drive it, drive it. We, maybe we can one day. And just like that, it is freaking raining all over again. This crap is getting ridiculous. I'm serious. It just freaking won't stop. Every time I come home, every day after work, it just starts freaking pouring and it just makes me totally unproductive. But that's not necessarily true for today because I've got some work to do on the laptop before we go racing again. So here we are, guys. Everything we're going to do in today's video is all within this Holly software. I am by no means a tuner. But you know what? I know just enough stuff to piss my tuner off to make him mad because I know just enough to be dangerous. Uh, but today we're going to go over some pretty simple stuff. This is nothing revolutionary, but I am finally going to start utilizing the CO2 setup that we put in the truck a long time ago. Well over a year ago. We actually have a whole video on that too. Um, I was definitely still learning to YouTube at that time, and I still am. But things have gotten a lot better. But it's finally time to start utilizing that CO2 setup. So here we go. We've got to do a couple of things. We've got to set ourselves up with a dome sensor. And we've got to make sure that we have two MAC valves pinned and operated, ready to open and close the wastegate as needed using the CO2. So first things first, let's get this dome sensor added. So here we go. Inputs and outputs. So obviously, if we need to know... Um, in order to use CO2, you've got to have a dome sensor. The Holly uses dome pressure to regulate the manifold pressure. It doesn't actually care what the manifold pressure is. It just chases a target dome pressure, which has, you know, which relates to manifold pressure across every setup. Now, that's going to be different from everybody's cars, everything top to bottom, a million variables change that. But you need to know what it does for your setup and tune the dome pressure accordingly. It can give you a ton of data, and if you use some inferences, you can basically figure out your back pressure just by looking at your dome pressure required to meet certain amounts of manifold pressure. But that's for another chat, that's for an actual tuner to tell you. Today, I'm just here to show you how to add this sensor. So let's just go ahead and say we're gonna add us a dome sensor, if I can type today. And it's gonna have to be enabled, and we're gonna have to make sure that this is a five volt. This is the way pretty much all pressure transducers are gonna work, and especially the favorite of me, um, especially my favorites, which are going to be low dollar sensors. So let's go in here to configure. I'll show you how to set this guy up. You're going to come down here, choose custom pressure because none of the drop down menu items are going to be set up exactly for what we need as far as a zero to 150 pressure sensor, which is what I use as a dome sensor. So first thing, come over here. Like we said, it's a 150 sensor. So we need to make sure that this says 150. So I don't like looking at red. I like looking at green. All this pressure is good. So there's no problem there at all. That's going to be, um, you know, the way that that is. Now, if you care about having a min or a max red, you can change those things. Like, you know, if you say anything over 125 is bad, you can do that. It's, it's really no problem. You can change all those things however you want. But here's the meat of it. Here's the actual important part of the thing is getting the scaling and the calibration for these sensors right. So with, if you buy a, 
load hour sensor, all of his five volt sensors are going to run between half a volt and 4.5 volts. Now, it moves some of these numbers around for you, but that's not accurate. Like one, two, three, four, and then it uses all of these cells to jump to 450. That's not the way. You're going to want to press Control A, so you highlight all of the bottom row here, right click, fill row values. That basically takes each number from the from the bookend here all the way to the bookend here, and then it just makes sure that the gaps in between there are even. So like you know, zero to seven or 50 to 77 is the same as 23 to 50. Same gap all the way across. Easy. Now same thing up here. You're going to make sure that's zero. I go over here. If it's a 150, if it's a 100 pressure, put 100. In our case, it's a 150. You put 150. Control A, right click, fill row values, and there you go. That is your sensor scaling for a low dollar, 150 pound pressure transducer, and that's going to be our dome sensor. All right, so over here in your boost ICF, the boost ICF that we just clicked on here, this is where some of the magic is going to start happening because in my case, originally I was running a Holly single three port Mac valve just using the uh, the extra pressure from the turbo to push back on the wastegate to help that sucker closed. Um, but that, you know, that's really good and it's really simple and it's cut and dry and it just, it just, it just works. It's fine. But the really, the best way to do it is with the CO2 setup that requires an extra Mac valve. It requires a dual Humphrey setup or a dual Mac setup. Same thing. So as far as that goes, that's how that's going to be set up. All of this rest of this stuff is arbitrary to your setup. It's going to be, you know, it's going to mean something to you, whether you want to scramble, whether you want to target more on the launch, whether, you know, whatever you want your safeties at, it doesn't matter. That's all up to you. What we're focusing on is getting this dual Humphrey added, making sure that we're using dome pressure only, which is the only way that a Holly Terminator X or X Max will let you do it. And then in a drag racing case, you're going to want to consider using boost versus time since everything on the track happens relative to time. That's where everything going to comes in. Like your zero to, you know, your 60 foot time, that's important. That's where all your boost ramp or any type of timing modifications that you do are going to come in. They're all time based. Everything you're doing is focused on getting a quicker or faster time. Some of you roll racing guys or road racing guys, you're going to find some use in some of these other things more so than versus time. But for people drag racing, that's going to be your bread and butter for most setups. Now, next, go to your dome control setup because this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. and You got to make sure you got your things right. So when you see this, you might say, oh, a compressor. That's a that's an air compressor, you know, and an air, this compressed air and CO2. That's the same thing. Well, that's wrong because compressor stands for your turbo. It's whatever you're using to push the air closed with. But it is not a fixed pressure source like CO2 or compressed air. That's what fixed is going to relate to because the pressure that you regulate them to is a fixed amount. And in my case, I use I regulate my CO2 ball to 100 pounds. That's what the the lines between the Mac valve and the CO2 bottle C is 100 pounds. So that's why I set it there. This PID terms, this is how it modulates the fill and vent solenoids. I am in no way, no way qualified to start explaining to you guys what these things mean and how they work. There's going to be a billion better videos than I can do to set that up. I, uh, Like I said before, I'm just dangerous enough to tell you guys the wrong things about those. So I'm just going to leave that up to either A, your tuner, or B, you to watch someone else's video and figure it out better than I can explain it. But we're going to want to make sure that you have this dome pressure input selected. That's the dome sensor that we added in our I.O. earlier, if you remember that. So then back to boost, dome control, setup. Everything looks good there. So next is boost versus time. Like I said, this is where you're going to start configuring your boost ramp. All of this stuff is customizable. You can move these things down to the hundredth of a second if you'd like. All the way up to, you know, you can make this guy 99 seconds, I think, or maybe even more. I'm not sure. But this is where the bread and butter of your boost is going to start coming in. So you can add like an extra three pounds of dome pressure there. And one hundredth of a second later, you can target nine more. And then three seconds in, you can cut all the boost off if you want. Six, and six seconds later, you can send her to the moon with an extra, you know, 30 pounds, whatever you want. That's This is all customizable. You can do whatever you want here. This is all going to be based on what kind of power your car makes what the track can take, you know, what you're willing to do. You can make this do whatever your setup needs it to do. But the important part is that we have 
this boost plus solenoid this is what adds co2 or compressed air to your dome and this boost vent solenoid set up correctly as pwms that's going to be pulse width modulated mac valves that means that you feed them a positive 12 all the time on one side and then the ecu actually just grounds them it just does a duty cycle um, to complete the circuit basically make these guys open and close and like i said the plus solenoid is going to be your fill that's what adds boost that's what adds dome pressure to your setup and the vent is to let it off in case you start making too much boost so like early on in the run say you want to make 30 pounds in your manifold overall well early in that run it's going to have this fill void solenoid open it's going to go hey add some boost add some dome so it's going to pin the gate shut it's going to start spinning the turbo harder because now none of that air is going out of the wastegate and then as it approaches 30 pounds or whatever your target is it's going to start slowing back down and letting some of that back out with this vent solenoid now where do we use those things at here we go i'll show you it's in the pin map so here's this dome sensor that we created earlier i know you guys haven't forgot that yet so you've got to put that on one of your four available inputs and outputs. Okay, this is what I use to just have a set duty cycle on that valve, but we're going to get duty, we're going to get fancy. So but that's really all there is to it to getting any Holly inputs and outputs working. Is this that you've got to click and drag them and put them where you want them. Make sure that they're doing their job. And you're off to the races. You're off to doing what you want them to do. There's lots and lots of tuning to be done in these tables, as you've seen. You can move all this stuff around. You could come in here and you can change these numbers and do all sorts of things with them. They all do different things, mean different things, have different jobs and roles. Um, but that's going to be what controls your CO2 setup. And this is exactly what I'm going to go through here and actually set up with sort of some intentional numbers before we hit the track. So that way, hopefully, when we get there, we can uh, hit the ground running per se. And this thing will all just work. It'll all be magic. We won't have any difficulties with it. And we'll actually get way faster using all of this new stuff that we've got because we've added the brand new intercool intercooler tank and pump that we've only got to run one time. We've got the brand new Force Performance HD8892 big fat boy turbo that we've only got to run one time. And when we did run it, it had broken parts. The converter was broken. So speaking of converters, we got a new converter. We've got new gears. We've got all this new stuff to try as well as the CO2 setup. So we've got a lot of moving pieces that kind of have to come together but all of them should have benefits for us in the long run. And we're going to have probably have to deal with some bugs first time out. But if you can get in here and get on the laptop, get your ducks in a row, make sure that things are working the way that they should from the computer and the software standpoint of things before you get to the track, you're going to be miles ahead. Hey guys, so I'm sorry about the pop-ups that you're not able to see in the video there, but I promise they're super simple. If you open up your software, you click around a little bit, you're going to see exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Those things are going to be pretty cut and dry, especially that stuff at the end where I'm talking about the pen maps and clicking and dragging the inputs and outputs. It's really no issue whatsoever. I promise if you, uh, if you just open it up and click around a little bit, you'll find out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. If you need more visual aid or more instruction, like I said, Devin Vanderhoof is the dude. He has excellent videos on all of the Holly AFI subjects, but I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of what I had going on on a rainy day while I really didn't have anything else going on. Austin and I have several things in the works. We have several things that are going to be coming up soon, and I have like two or three videos that are about halfway done, but this rain and our work schedules, you know, just life in general has put those things on hold, but I promise we got more coming. But some of you guys were interested in the Holly aspect side of things. So I wanted to introduce that to you a little bit. But thanks for tuning in to me. I'm Diggin Z71. My name is Dylan. Keep digging. We'll see you next time.